zoom in and to the left. Yeah. Hi, and welcome to episode two of my OSRS Hardcore Iron Man series. As mentioned in episode one, the ultimate goal of this series is to obtain the achievement diary cape without dying. I do intend to go in order, completing all easies, moving on to mediums, and then eventually hards and elites. I do actually already meet all the requirements for the easy diaries, and my first roadblock isn't until the mediums where I lack the construction level required, so that seems like a good place to start off. So I decided to cut some tea clogs here on Fossil Island to bank some construction experience. I'm only at 25 right now, I need 37 for the medium. Uh, basically you just hop through this agility shortcut here which you require 70 agility for and then you just bank on the fossil island chest. Uh, I'm gonna go beyond just 37 construction though I think I'm gonna aim for around 64 ish so I can make a decent altar in my house and then also boost my prayer. Um, how many tea clogs do I have right now? Uh, where are these things? I had zero when I started. Yeah, now I'm getting up there a little bit. I think I need around six or seven thousand to have 64 construction banked, so that's the goal. Took a break from cutting teaks for a little bit, decided to do kind of a farming run. I'm here at the farming guild. Um, getting very close to 92 farming actually, should probably get it while I'm here. Um, I always like to grow watermelon and snape grass. For the bush patch and cactus patch, those things will respawn after you pick them, so I usually just keep them and just pick them every time I come by the guild. For the flower patch, I like to keep growing limps, uh, just because those are a useful secondary for a herb lore. And that's really the reason why I'm going to keep doing farming. So I'm coming up on level 92 here, uh, just a few experience points away, but uh, that's you know more than enough for all the diaries, but I do need to basically keep doing the contract so I can keep getting seeds so I can get that 90 herb lore, which is a elite diary requirement. And doing the tree runs is actually pretty passive, so I think I'll just keep doing that as uh, time goes by, and eventually I'll just end up at 99. Uh, I get all my tree seeds from birdhouse runs, so I don't really have too many, but I don't think I'll ever actually run out. So, level coming in right now. Wait for it, and there it is, very nice, 92, halfway there. Nice. So if you're like me and you actually dislike playing RuneScape, then you probably do the same thing. You probably train Hunter exclusively through birdhouses. That's what I've been doing so far, uh, which means I'm always hitting up Amelia here at the farming guild for her stuff. Feeling lonely? Consider buying yourself a kitten. They like to eat, you have to give them attention. It's basically the same thing as having a girlfriend. So I'm gonna take advantage of this being just the second episode in the series and show you guys kind of where I'm at. So this is my tankiest equipment that I use for Hispori. Uh, and just in general, it's my tankiest. I forgot my gloves, so let me just go grab those right now. I don't have Imperos gloves, just Void gloves, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I do intend to do Hespori going forward. It's some of the best farming XP in the game. I do already have the bottomless bucket, but I like to get the uh, white lily seeds and some of the other funky seeds from Hespori. Uh, white lilies can be assigned as a hard contract, and they grow, I think, in like 20 minutes. So you do want to be ready in case uh, you get that assigned, because it's probably one of the quickest contracts you can get. And that's another kill in the books. Let's see what we get. And white lily seeds, exactly like I was just saying. So there you go. So I'm about to tear open a couple of packs of Skittles here and see what I get. Uh, I don't know how people got 99 herb lore without these. These are the seed packs I was talking about. Um, you know, I'm going to need these to get to 90 herb lore for sure. So I'm going to keep doing them. Some more mind-blowing edge of your seat content right here. Content, 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 nice. Contenido. Content. Triple content. Uh, more content. So I don't usually take redwood contracts, but I planted one and I know it's done, so I figured might as well. Nope. Back at the Fossil Island Teaks again, almost done I think, I have around 6k logs in the bank. I'll probably do a few more trips and then just uh, call it. I just got to 97 woodcutting, very nice. Uh, it'll probably end up being my first 99 because I just like to woodcut when I'm trying to AFK, it's super easy. Just got 47 herb lore from the Book of Knowledge uh, from that school random event, so 
that's always a nice little boost. Uh, Herb lore, as I've been saying, is my big story. All right, I think I'm done here. Shout out to Bizarti. Been hanging out with this guy while cutting teaks. Uh, he's grinding hard over in Sweden. Uh, I think I got over 7k in the bank, so I'm out of here. So I got a redwood tree contract that I accepted because I know I have one ready, as you may have heard. And uh, it's actually the next morning, uh, and it is now ready, so that's a nice XP drop. So I don't actually know what the meta is for Iron Man when it comes to growing redwoods. I have about 10 in my bank. Each one takes about 4 days to grow, so that's about 40 days worth. I don't know if I'm supposed to be growing them or just saving them for something, but if you pay this lady 2k, she just pummels the tree out of existence, banishes it to the Shadow Realm, and you're basically good to go, so I've just been growing them. Subscribe for more quality content. Drop an 80k worth of fire tallies on the ground because he's nasty. So I got my Zerker ring from Rex a couple weeks ago and I haven't imbued it yet and I figured I might as well since I'm going to be doing a lot of Slayer to get to that 95 Slayer for the Elite Diaries eventually. And so I'm just starting off with my first round of Nightmare Zone just trying to get some points. So I don't want to waste prayer potions and NMZ so I'm going to use the absorption method where you get yourself down to 1 HP and then drink uh, absorptions. And for that, I need the Dwarven Rock Cake, which means I need to free the Mountain Dwarf, and I need to start Recipe for Disasters, so that's what I'm doing here uh, with this guy. What do I got to do? I'm just clicking through the dialogue. Ah, there we go. Okay. So Lumbered Chef guy said he needed an Eye of Newt uh, for me to start Recipe for disaster. so I'm just picking up a few extras here just to be safe. But in all seriousness, I will actually use these for the Herblore Grind very soon for the Super Attack Potions. Man, the very first step of this quest is already a pain in the butt. It took quite some time to gather all this, but I finally have it. What? What do you mean I don't have everything? Forgot to bring my ashes, but good thing a family member was recently cremated, so I had these on hand. I think we should be good to go. What the heck? Right, so you gotta use the ashes on the drink, of course. Why wouldn't you do that? I should have known. And let's see. Yes, okay. Finally, there we go. So now RFD is officially, I guess, started or whatever. Now I have access to the basement. And I think to all these people in this room, let's go find out. Yeah, this looks promising. Okay, nice, yeah. And this is like that epically long cutscene, probably the longest one in all of RS. Looks like everybody in this room fell asleep during that cutscene, so I'm going to try to wake Gimli up. Gimli's grandpa said if I watch him break dance, he'll bless me with the cake. Let's see if it's true. Ah, oh, there it is. He just, just plops it on the table, eh? Okay. Grab that. And we're good. Done one round at NMZ. Picked up all the big bones because I'm efficient like that. Yeah, let's hit the bank. Alright, back in NMZ, coming up on 89 strength, and there it is, I think that puts me at 100 combat, yes it does, and enough points for an imbue. Uh, another inventory full of prayer XP, beautiful, time to imbue this bad boy. Let's go, first time ever actually doing this, what do I do? Just click. Alright, oh it's so nice, so bright, like my future on YouTube. Okay, now that NMZ is done, I stop by the Edgeville Furnace, which is where I always go for some reason to make my dig site pendants, so just got to uh, enchant them. You can just click once and it'll do all of them, but it's a bit faster if you just manually click all of them, and basically the faster I do it, the less you have to listen to me talk, so I think it's a win for everybody. Realized I have a bunch of clues in my bank, so I'm going to do the easy and beginner. The med and hard, I need to do regicide for, so it's next on my list. Got one casket in my inventory. This should be the last step for the second one. Let's see. All right, perfect. Casket acquired. Uh, let's see what you got for me, Uri. Yuri. Okay. That's, yeah. And, yeah, okay. I mean, that's a unique. Can you get some... Uh, Fashion scape going maybe. Let's let's see what this looks like. Yeah, maybe not. Did some wood cutting and got a couple more clues, so now I'm here again with two caskets. Let's see what we got this time. Zoom in for a better look. And beginner first. Alright, so nothing really. And the easy. Yeah, okay. Black plate legs T, those actually look cool at least, so I'll take that. 
Let's see what those look like. Yeah, that's sharp. Practically getting more clues than logs from redwoods. Let's see. Okay, typical and easy. Eh. A lot of people skip all random events, but I do find on an Iron Man it's worth doing some of them, especially the troll one where you play the, the game, and then this one where Molly gives you a description of her evil sorority sister and you have to pick her out out of a lineup. Uh, you can get some noted gems, and you know, I need rubies for my Digzite pendants, so that's what I'm always hoping for. Maybe next time. Gains from editing this video. Just finished a fire giant's task and picked up all the bones. Let's see what we got next. Kurasks, perfect. Speaking of bones, and again, since this is the second episode, I feel obligated to kind of show what I have in the bank. I've got to have at least a few hundred thousand XP banked, and that's why I need that construction level up. Clan members maxing, but irons can't go into POHs. And there he is, the man of the hour. Shout out to Rear on a successful RS career. Ha. Huh. So this is actually my first ever Karask's task, and I got a superior. Looks like this guy intends to just leave that Snapdragon seed there, worth 81k. Yoink. Second superior, same task, nothing. Third superior, same task. That's wild. And you got the kill coming in. Nothing. Fourth superior now, that's pretty crazy. Who really needs anything more than the XP drop anyway? Many people are quarantined right now and desperate times call for desperate measures. Task complete. Task received. Efficiency. Whatever you say, daddy. Another task done. Should be a casket right here. Should be a casket right here. And let's open these caskets right here. Beginner first. Mm-hmm. And big money. Yes, Amarek page, nice. Another casket right here. Let's take a look, shall we? Hey, some bling bling. Uh, just doing another farming tree run and 93 farming. Bam. As mentioned earlier, I have a couple clues for which I have to complete regicide, and now seems like a good time. I made it to the elf lands. Really don't know why I thought just bringing a dagger would be a good idea. Scratch that, I regret nothing. Good to see people taking the coronavirus seriously. Precautions are important. Second trip through underground pass, forgot my rope. Went back for my rope, forgot my spade. Got my spade and forgot that your rope gets consumed, so forgot my rope. Brought a spade and two ropes, just to be safe. Few things are more satisfying than opening presents on Christmas morning. Completing regicide is one of them. Just gonna grab a Zolar KC real quick. Just kidding, I got a clue here. Blue Dehyde, eh? Not sure if I have that. Let's see. Uh, I don't, but I can craft it. And will this be enough Dehyde to make body and vans? Oh, perfect. Just enough to make both. Fa. Okay, we're good. Hmm. Learning from my mistakes. There we go. Okay, and this should be the casket coming up. Why doesn't that work? Right, so apparently it's not a lighthouse if there's no light. I guess that makes a certain amount of sense, but fortunately the next part of the quest was repairing it, and all you have to do is use some swamp tar, a tinder premium subscription, and molten glass, and this baby's back in business. And just grabbing what should be the casket here next to our idol Twiggy O'Corn making a nice little cameo appearance. What a beauty. One day it'll be me wearing that cape and wandering around aimlessly. You know the rules, beginner first. Okay, moving on to the medium. Okay, and let's see what the hard has got for us here. Zami traps, yeah, that's pretty good. Now I have Bandos and Zami traps. Just hit the bank and turns out that was an ancient kite, not a rune kite. All right, so we finally made it to some actual diary progress, and I do apologize for this episode being so long. Since it's just the beginning of the series still, I felt the need to inform you guys how I usually train my skills and 
included all kinds of stuff like that, but in the future I do intend for the episodes to be a bit shorter and a bit more action packed. Without further ado, here are the skill requirements for the Desert Easy Diaries. I obviously meet all the skill requirements, but I actually haven't started Itchlorin's Little Helper yet. But since I'm gonna need the quest cape for the Elite Diaries, I figure I might as well complete it and not just start it. So here I am at the quest start, beginning off by challenging this wanderer to a fight with my cat. This looks like it's being recorded from the inside of a washing machine. Despite him being high, the priest says I'm done the quest. That wasn't bad, not bad at all. Time to do the diary tasks. One of the tasks is to open up a sarcophagus in Pyramid Plunder, which I've never played before, so I'm curious to see how it goes. And is this it? Oh, pretty easy. Right after that, I went ahead and uh, completed the next task, which is to sell some stuff to uh, this guy by the Agility Pyramid here. And uh, task complete. Okay, next up is catching one of these uh, golden flying pheasants or whatever, and uh, let's see how long this takes. Conveniently located just north of these flying, well I guess they're still flying around here, but basically in the same area is these uh, this mining site with these clay rocks that you're supposed to mine for five clay, and that's another task. And yep. Next up is going to Narda and paying someone 200 coins to do something I can do with one click. Done. Last but not least, Prince Ali wants us to ground these flying penguins that he has in his backyard. Done. And that's all the desert easy. Back at Jar now at Shanti Pass to pick up my reward. And uh, you already know it's Herb XP time. Nice little bonus. So let's take a look at the progress completed so far. I already had Ardoin and Verag done, so now I'm adding the Desert Easy, and I intend to move a lot quicker going forward with these. Looking at the ranking total level goals, we gained a solid 150 ranks during this episode and 10 total levels. Again, I feel like this will move a lot quicker going forward now that we have the first episode stuff out of the way. If you enjoyed the series, please give a like so other people can find it as well. See ya in episode 3.